So monetary evaluation is about uh, how to measure the consequences of certain actions in, in terms of money. And uh, why do we need to do this? Well, basically when you try to compare different uh, investment projects or different actions like A versus B, and A could be an investment in the healthcare sector and B could then be an investment in the traffic sector for example so A will save you some life years for example and B will save you some time building a bridge so that will save time for lots of people so what should you do then should you invest in the hospital or should you build a bridge well you can't really compare the two unless you measure them in the same unit and because A well that's gonna save lives so you have to measure that against trade that off against time saved by lots of people uh, and unless you have some common unit you can't do that and that's why we need monetary evaluation at least that's what people claim we do it because we need to compare and we need to do that in the same unit we need the same unit in order to compare so then we have to find a way of measuring all the consequences in one unit and the unit we're going to use is, is money and I'm just going to present the theory here now. I'm just going to—I'm not going to say that this always works in practice, but uh, there are some methods that economists use to measure things in money, uh, also including things that most people think cannot be measured in money. So the first approach would be—and um, let's use a, a specific example. We could use a specific example of, of how much um, would it be worth in, to, to save a life, a statistical life, just a random person. Um, how much should we, would we be willing to invest in order to save the life of one random person? Well, one approach would be to use what they call the human capital approach. Human capital. And on this approach, you, you simply say that, well, the valuation of a life is, is proportional to the, to the product. And the product from a person is basically what they can produce uh, and how much is that worth? Well, that's measured by the salary they get. Um, so basically on this approach they use the salary to measure, to measure the, the valuation of, of saving a life. So uh, let's say the average salary in the country is 100,000 US dollars. So if you can find an investment project that costs less than $100,000 to save uh, a life year, and it's worth doing on this approach. Um, there's a different approach, which is to use people's uh, or the observed preferences. Sometimes it's sometimes called the revealed preferences. Observed preferences, and you can use the observed preferences from different sources. You could use it from official decision makers, for example like the courts and they get compensation for life uh, uh, lost. The problem with that is it's not really doesn't really give you any independent information. Why should I believe the judgment of the court in this case? Why why do they know anything about the value of life that is different? Then they gotta have a basis for for their judgment as well. So that's more interesting than the fact that they say it's worth something. Why do they say that? Okay, so I'm not gonna, you know, I don't rely on just the course. I need a theory. Why? Uh, you could actually look at individuals and their observed preferences, and then you have a better reason, I think, to to uh, trust the numbers. Okay, so individual decision makers. And basically, individuals make at least three choices that involve uh, trading off. Uh, risk and, and money so first of all they trade off risk and money when they choose their job so there's a wage risk trade-off for example uh, people sometimes choose risky professions and when they do that they demand a wage compensation in order to take the higher risk so you can look at uh, uh, risks involved in different pro uh, professions like being a, a miner in Ukraine is a high-risk profession and how much more they demand in order to take those jobs and that tells you something about how willing they are on how much money they need in order to uh, take a risk 
and you can extrapolate and say, okay, uh, an increase in 0 0.1 probability is worth they demand ten thousand dollars in order to 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 take that risk. So one life would be worth at least one hundred thousand dollars on this approach. Then, um, a second choice that people actually make is about insurance. Now, if you're talking about life insurance, I, I'm not really sure that this will work because, and some people have listed insurance there, because uh, life insurance is most mainly motivated by by um, giving money to the people who are left behind. You're not actually going to enjoy the money yourself if you die. So, so I'm not a little bit uncertain about this approach. But the third approach is more interesting. It's about um, the goods you purchase. Because sometimes you purchase goods that actually reduce risk of, of dying so it could be safety equipment for example okay safety goods you actually buy safety goods sometimes or goods that are related so for example let's say you could uh, uh, not just directly safety goods but let's say you can choose between two airline companies for the same travel a will give you it's, it's going to cost you one hundred dollars but the probability of, of um, dying on that airline, let's say it's really high, this is just for the sake of illustration, is 0.2. Or you could choose a different airline company, B, but then you have to pay $1,000. But now the risk is only 0.1. Now if you choose B, here, that tells you, well, that tells us something about your um, willingness to pay. We call this willingness to pay. You're willing to pay in order to reduce risk here. And if you're willing to extrapolate again, what you're saying here is that, okay, the price difference is $900. So you're paying $900 more in order to reduce your risk by going from 0 0.2 to 0 0.1. It's 0 0.1. You're reducing your risk by 0 0.1. So what is, uh, this is only one-tenth of, of your life, basically. Uh, so the whole life is then worth 10 times as much. So you just multiply this by 10 to get 1, and multiply this by 10, so you get 9,000. Aha, your willingness to pay, uh, or, or the willingness to pay here in this case, which was just for illustration, by choosing airline company B, you reveal that your willingness to pay for 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 this uh, for for your life is uh, then your life is worth at least nine thousand dollars. Okay. So this shows you how it can be calculated. Now, sometimes you don't even have absurd preferences. Um, and sometimes it's possible to choose indirect preferences in the sense that these are all direct preferences in, in terms of um, risky choices. Uh, but you can actually choose indirect valuation sometimes. For example, um, if you're gonna put a money value on a park, to what extent do people actually travel to the park? because people have different costs of traveling. So you can find uh, the valuation of the park using that approach. Um, now, there's a third method here as well. Um, and this is called, if you don't have observed preferences and you don't even have direct observed preference or not, not even indirect observed preferences, then you can use, um, then you have to use, or you can use stated preferences. And this is basically just asking people um, and you could have an open-ended question. Uh, if you're willing, uh, if you were able to reduce your risk of dying by 0.1% or, or 0.1, how much are you willing to pay? An open-ended question like that. And obviously when you do this, you have to be very careful uh, how you design a question. This is called contingent valuation, asking people like that, contingent valuation. Now, obviously you will get really strange answers sometimes because people say oh I'm willing to pay an infinite sum so then you have to make sure that people actually understand that they do have to pay this you can't pay more than you actually earn for example um, so it's called the contingent valuation is one one option there's another option which is called discrete preferences discrete choice experiments discrete choice experiments and basically what you do in this approach is you give people lots of options between A versus B and you describe A as a situation with risk and income and everything and B as a situation and you make people choose between A and B and then you give them lots of different choices like that between different situations and from that 
and the choices they make, um, you can actually infer how much they value their lives. So these were some methods on how we can actually put the monetary value on something that is seemingly impossible uh, to put a money value on. And of course, in practice, you will get lots of different answers using this approach. But this is the theory.